Hi, welcome to Cascadeur. In this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to the software interface and help you make your very first animation. So, you've downloaded and installed Cascadeur and the first thing you see is a startup window. You can access this window at any time by pressing the home icon. In the Samples tab, you can find a set of scenes with characters and animations. Let's open this one, for example. You can see the character from the scene displayed in the viewport. Now, let's take a closer look, shall we? To navigate the view, hold Alt and left-click to rotate the camera. Hold Alt and right-click to zoom in and zoom out. Hold ALT and middle mouse button to move the camera. As a rule, scenes contain a lot of objects and rig elements. And if we choose to display all these objects all at once in the viewport, that'll make the scenes cluttered and difficult to work with. To avoid that, there's a set of display modes that you can choose from. Each mode displays and gives you access to a specific set of scene elements. In the view mode, for example, we can only see the character's mesh, so this view is very useful to check and play back your animation. But to start our work, we shall switch to auto-posing mode. Auto-posing is an AI-assisted tool which predicts the position of the rest of the body from the given key points. The controllers for this mode look as a set of connected points. Click the blue point at the character's foot. To move it, use Translate Manipulator. You can select it from the Tool panel or simply press W. In our case, it's already activated. Left-click and hold the green arrow and pull the character's leg up. Notice how much the whole pose has changed. The character lifted its arms and slightly shifted the center of mass to the leg which remained on the ground. If the pose resets every time you change it, that means the current frame doesn't have a key on it. For now, just make sure to stay on frame 0. Let's now try to move the leg sideways. Dragging the square icon allows you to move the object along the corresponding planes. Notice how the whole body rotates as you move the leg around. This happens because the position of all inactive green points is calculated automatically. In our case, the only active blue points are at the feet, so autoposing is using them to predict the position of the rest of the body. Now select the direction controller at the character's chest and move it around. Notice how the points of the direction controller has turned blue, which means it's now activated. Now try moving the leg again along the same plane. The character no longer turns around because we have specified its direction, and our autoposing is taking it into account. To control the position and the rotation of the body, use the points at the pelvis and the neck. By activating the pelvis point, I can move the character's body and I can lean the character, moving the points at the neck. Now both the pelvis and the neck points are active now, which means they will no longer have influence on each other. So if I want to move the whole body now, I will have to move both. Press and hold SHIFT to select multiple points by clicking on them, and click again to deselect any. Now having both of these points selected, you can now move the whole body. And of course you can select multiple points in the scene by dragging a box around them. Left click and hold the mouse button to make a selection. Note that in the autoposer mode, only the active blue points will be selected. To deactivate the controller, select the blue points you wish to deactivate and click this button or press SHIFT-Z. The deactivated point will likely to instantly change its position, because now it is being determined by the autoposing. 
The less active points there are in the scene, the more freedom auto-posing has. For example, it can automatically place the foot on the ground when it gets close to it. Same way auto-posing can place the foot on a toe. But if you activate all the points of the foot, this will no longer happen. However, this way, you can control its direction. There is another way to quickly select multiple points. Double-click the point of the foot to select all the points attached to it. Select the Rotate Manipulator to rotate the foot along one of its axes. Notice how the rotation of the foot influences the position of the knee. But you can always activate the knee point to lock its position. And once activated, neither the rotation of the foot nor pelvis will change its position. But as soon as you need the knee to be positioned automatically again, just simply deactivate its point. Try to be strategic with your points, activate them only when you need them. Here for instance, I can move the main point of the foot to raise it on its toe automatically and then select the rest of the points and rotate them. And here I want to tell you about the local and global manipulator modes. Switch to Translate Manipulator and check the direction of the arrows. Right now they are aligned to the coordinate system of the software. This is called Global Manipulator Mode. This mode is useful to move objects along the coordinates of the scene, say moving the foot along the floor. But when you switch to the Local Mode, the direction of the arrows corresponds the orientation of the selected object. In this case, it means the arrow points in the same direction as the toe of the foot. You can rotate the foot in the local mode as well. And these are pretty much all the things you need to know to set a pose. Now, let's make a short animation, shall we? Animation pretty much consists of a sequence of poses on different frames. You can see all the frames of the animation on the timeline. The frames which contain poses that you set are called keyframes and are displayed blue on the timeline. Now the only keyframe we have is on frame 0. Let's set the first pose for our animation on this frame. Deactivate the points and return the pose to its initial state. Or you can simply press Ctrl Z to undo the changes. For our pose, we'll first need to activate the direction controller of the head to get the character to look forward. Now, let's move right foot forward. And then adjust the rotation of the body using the direction controller of the chest. And that should be it for the starting pose of our animation. To make our next pose, we first have to create a new key. Go to frame 20 and click this button to create one, or simply press F. Now we need to change the pose in the new key. I suggest we just mirror it. To do that, double click the pelvis point of the character to select all the points. Go to mirror tool and select the mirror plane along which you want the mirroring to happen. Make sure that mirror pelvis position is turned off and click Mirror on Current Frame. Now we have two keyframes with different poses in them. You can quickly switch between them by holding Shift and pressing A or D. Let's now make our animation return to our first pose in the end. This will allow us to make a looping animation. Select the key on frame 0 Hold Shift and middle mouse button and drag the key to frame 40. And now we have successfully copied the first key. Currently there are no poses in between the frames, so the poses switch abruptly. Now select all the frames of our animation. Left click and drag a box along the timeline. Then expand the interpolations box and select Bezier Clamped. What we've done here is that we used interpolation to calculate the poses in between the frames. 
However, let's make it so that the character would stand still for some time before changing the pose. To do that, go to frame 0 and copy that key to frame 10. This way, we created an interval between two identical poses, so our character would not move on that interval. Let's make another interval like that after the character changes the pose. To do that, simply copy frame 20 to frame 30. And now we have all the keys that we need for our animation. Click this button to limit the timeline to the animation range. And press play to watch it. Now let's use auto physics to make this animation much more exciting. Click the auto physics button to display the physics assistant. It shows you what your animation will look like once various physical algorithms are applied to it. These algorithms are displayed on the physics settings tab on the right. Currently, physics corrector is the only thing applied. So what Autophysics did was that it determined on which frames the character has fulcrum points and on which it doesn't, and adjusted the transition between the poses by adding little jumps and setups for them. You can change the animation timings which will have an impact on the end result. For example, select the key on frame 10 and press plus on your keyboard to add more frames after it. The more frames there are between the keys, the longer this animation would take. And the longer the character has to stay airborne during the jump, the higher the jump will have to be. Same way you can remove the frames from the interval by pressing the minus key on your keyboard, and thus reduce the animation time. You can also change the timings by moving the keys along the timeline. To do that, select the key and hold the middle mouse button to drag it. Same as copying, but without holding shift. Now, let's add another physics algorithm to our animation. Secondary motion. When you first enable it, nothing changes in the animation. That's because you have to set which body parts will be affected by the secondary motion and to what extent. Select all the points of the arms of the character and all the frames of the animation. And open the secondary motion tab. You can find four values there that you can tweak to achieve different results for the secondary motion. Make sure that this button is on and glows red. When it's on, it means that the changes that you make apply to the whole selected interval instead of just a single frame. Now let's change the local blending value. The lower the value is, the greater effect the secondary motion will have. Let's set it to 20 and see what happens. On the physics assistant, you can clearly see the secondary motion affects the animation, but far too much. You can increase the local blending value, but instead, you can increase damping. And as the name suggests, it dampens the amplitude. So let's set the damping value to 50. And as you can see, the arms now are just slightly loose. But be free to try various settings to see which ones work best for your particular animation. But now, because we use secondary motion, the poses at the beginning and at the end of the animation no longer match. To make them match again, you can go to the very last frame of the animation and set the local blending value back to 100. Thus, its value will grow on the last interval until it matches the initial pose. And now, the poses in the both keyframes will be almost identical again. Now, let's snap our animation to the physics result. To do so, just click Snap to Auto Physics button. Since we've been using secondary motion, we get this warning. Click Yes. Once the secondary motion is applied, the setting for it will be disabled. Otherwise, new secondary motion will be layered on top of the animation that already has one. So each time the effects will increase, and we don't need that. 
And now the animation from the physics assistant has been transferred to our character. Notice how the frames between the keys have turned green. That means the interpolation is now fixed. Fixed interpolation means that the animation is baked into every frame. So changing poses in the keyframes will no longer have any effect on the intervals. Now, if you want to change the poses in the keyframes, you will have to set a different kind of interpolation for the intervals first. Then once the change is done, you can once again snap the animation to auto physics. But our animation is pretty much done here. Now we can export it to FBX or to a video file. So good luck and thanks for watching.